This is BD-1 from Star Wars, and this is the real robotic version of BD-1. Notice how both are so animated. Robots are not typically known for being so lively, they're usually known for being stiff. Yet at Disney, they've always seemed to create robots that feel alive. To help us understand how we can bring a stiff robot to life is Ayi Musa. He can make robots do whatever he wants, whether it be draw, lift weights, jump, and even dance sometimes. But before we dive too deep into how we bring robots to life, let's create a simple turret that'll help us on our journey. Now that we're all finished, we're going to split the turret into three separate parts and slowly bring it to life. Currently, our turret can only rotate its head and it looks quite stiff. The first step into making our character convey more emotion is animating the way the character moves without adding anything. Even if the robot is built for only one function, we can use animation techniques to make the robot feel more dynamic and ultimately less robotic. Take Aid's robot. Its main purpose is to be able to walk. Even though that's its main purpose, Aid built on top of that and added fluid dancing animations. I know you said the main purpose for the robot was walking, but did you ever plan for it to dance or did it just happen? Yeah, um, it definitely just sort of happened. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really plan for it in the beginning. Um, yeah, I don't know, when I was programming it, I was like, oh, you know, it'd be kind of cool if I could just make it sort of move around <laughs> a little bit. Disney's approach is a bit different because their robot's main purpose is for show only. That means a lot of the work will need to go into how the robot is animated, whether that be robotic and very linear animations, or more fluid like the animations we see in movies and video games. With that in mind, they start by creating their robots like a typical robot might be created, but then they add extra show features, which we'll talk about in a second. After that, they recreate the robot in a software animation program. From there, the animators can animate the robot however they want. When the animators are finished, the animation is exported to the robot itself, where the person controlling the robot can just click a button, and the robot will play the animation that the animators created. Boston Dynamics also does this, but they don't typically add extra show features. For our turret, we can keep it simple and try out a bunch of different animations on the fly. For example, we can make our turret stutter and look back constantly. That shows nervousness. Or we can show suspicion by having a robot scan and randomly dart back to a certain location every single time. That's essentially how Aid made his robot dance, by trying out a bunch of different animations and finding one that stuck. Yeah, so I mean, it was all just manual. Yeah, it was just, just sort of programming the movements, right? Tilt this way, move this way, and then mm. cycle back, you know? I see. Now, just a bare bones robot can convey a lot of emotion, but you can only do so much with such limitations. So to allow our robots to show even more emotion, extra show features can be added. Things like adding eyes, motors, and even adding lights. All of these will be for show and not necessarily for function. For Disney's BD-1, engineers added a bunch of motors just in BD's head to allow it to move and rotate how BD-1 might end the game. They even added the ability to move his antennas. If these motors didn't exist, we'd have a far less expressive version of our robot, like the RC version of BD. For our turret, we can add a googly eye to show a little bit more character, and the eye perfectly aligns with the nervous nature that we're trying to convey. Now we can control the eye with another servo, but I couldn't fit it in the turret, so this I'll have to do for now. Now a robot looks like it has a little bit more life, especially with the eyes, but there's one more thing that we can do to squeeze out more character out of our turret, and that's adding the ability to move. Obviously, making a robot stand and move comes with its own challenges. I had spent his whole summer just making one leg work for his upcoming bipedal robot, and that's just one leg. So um, over the summer, I just worked on making uh, one of the legs and testing that out and, you know, um, doing in inverse kinematics and having the like move in different directions and stuff like that. The same goes for Disney. When they recreated BD-1 in software, they not only animated it, but they taught it to walk using AI. That's why BD-1 doesn't fall when it's hit by its abusive owners. Now, if you're making a bipedal robot, you don't have to use AI. Boston Dynamics made a robot that can walk without AI and Aida is actually trying to do the same thing. If we can get the step done, it'll bring just as much life to the character as the other steps. After some failed prints and attempts, I was finally able to give our turret some new legs. Each leg only has one servo to control it, so it won't be able to walk, unless the speed of the legs are turned up, but I don't know if you would call this walking. Maybe crawling is a better word. Maybe not even that. If we compare this version of the turret to how it looked like in the beginning, we can see how much more character our turret has. By adding animations and extra features, we brought life to our turret. 
I wanted to say a big thank you to Aid for meeting up with me and actually helping me out. For those wanting to learn robotics, I've left some resources below, along with Aid's channel, and I've also left all the things that he recommends for those learning. Thank you for watching, and bye.